Well, so this week I'm gonna discuss the refrigeration on MIG. When I bought MIG, she had just a little ice box and it did have a very nice ice chest area at the back of the refrigerator, which I really like. Um, it was, I think it's a great ice box design. The back is small and you can fit blocks of ice in the back. The problem was that, and I'm sure it was not from uh, the factory build, the top had no insulation on it whatsoever. I I'm sure that at some point somebody, it was fallen down or something and somebody removed it. Um, so it didn't hold cold air for very long at all. Uh, and I was frustrated with that. I would rather just have storage there than than an ice box that actually couldn't keep anything cold for more than 10 hours. Um, so what I did is I insulated all of that and I added a refrigerator. And I had the beautiful little spot down here to put a compressor unit which uh, that works pretty well. I did have to drill some holes in my new wood <laughs> finish, but, and, and it don't, please don't judge me. I, when I get to doing a project, I sometimes just rush and I did not measure out where those holes needed to be. I just drilled three holes in each one. And um, yeah, so they ended up where they are. And I may actually put louvered vents in here. We'll see. We'll see how this does for keeping it cool. I also added a, uh, in this cupboard here, which is all electrical stuff, I added, I don't think we can see in there. I added a hole. Yeah, you can. I drilled a hole and put a little thing on it so nothing, water and stuff can't drip down there if it happens to leak in there, which it shouldn't. But uh, yeah, there's chain plates in there too. One of the, the middle chain plate is in there. Um, so that'll pull air up from, it'll pull air from here through the compressor, then out of there. And because there's no wood on the walls in here, it should send that air all through this entire uh, side of the boat. And it's cool down low where that is. So, so that should be that should be pretty cool. Oh, I'll just note, see my little cool knife holder and spice rack. And these neat little hangy things. They have nothing to do with the refrigerator. So anyway, so yeah, it's all insulated now. And McLean at Frostline Refrigeration in Bellingham. If you need a refrigerator custom built for your North Sea, he has all of the measurements and he can make one that fits this older North Sea perfectly, exactly the way it is, and you could just install it very easily after watching my video. Let's see what the heck I was thinking. This is McLean. He owns Frostline Refrigeration in Bellingham, and he has built a custom-designed refrigerator for a MIG. Beauty. Yeah, that was right at the top there. Yeah, it's kind of a perfect little spot. All right. This is his evaporator plate. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Built-in fan. Let's see. Okay. Actually, let's see. Uh, fun of a small boat. You gotta... Yep. You got that? Yep. Let's see if we can get 
This is the part where this is the whole reason I hired you to do the install. <laughs> That's right. Had you given me all this stuff and said, okay, install it, <laughs> I would have been all worried about how much you can bend that stuff and all kinds of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, looking good. Yes, sir. So I, I pulled a couple of these screws out and I drilled these holes all the way through. So I'll just go all the way through. Um, oh. Through that there. And it'll just basically that plastic part of the fridge will hold it up. That's enough to. Yeah, it just it just yeah. screws right into that stuff. Because it's not heavy. No, it's really not. And I want to put this thicker half inch foam on here to kind of help kind of absorb the curve of the hole there. Just don't want to go all the way through the hole. That's <laughs> that long bit. Yeah, <laughs> just a nice slow leak in your fridge. I think something like that's going to be nice. That would give you a little room if you did want to tuck some insulation up in there. Yeah, I've got some closed cell foam I'm going to just glue up to the all around the top and the top of the door and the whole thing. You know? I got a couple around the corner here I'm gonna do. Just gotta figure out where that goes. Let's see. Good. So here it is. Right along the back of the little fridge. Alrighty. Let's see here. So. so that back area was made originally to hold ice. And I've got some dividers and stuff that go in here that I will put in after he's gone. You'd be surprised what people want to watch. <laughs> it's that, fascinating. I, I've been, I've been so reluctant to film like me sanding, you know, and stuff like that. Right. And then people are like, "Well, oh, film that. We want to see it." <laughs> okay. We want to watch your work. A lot of times I don't film stuff because I don't want to, I don't want them to see my hack work. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it right, so. <laughs> Me attacking this foam with a kitchen knife, you know. <laughs> Now, what do you plug that hole up in there with? Um, I've got like spray, spray foam, foam in a can, yeah. yeah. Basically, just kind of put on too much and you let it cure and you can just crack it right off, you know. And, yeah. And this is really just to kind of prevent like sweating on this line because when it, you know, starts up or, you know, when you're in real humid weather, the pipe is cold enough to kind of get condensation on the outside of it. So it's just yeah. kind of keeps everything dry. the compressor unit that he you built this right oh yes correct I made it skinny enough skinnier than I normally make it just so it would fit into this little hole you got here let's see how do we want to do this the way I ended up meeting McLean and Frostline Marine is I was gonna order online I was gonna order a, I think I was looking at an isotherm and um, I couldn't find any of them. Frigaboat, Isotherm, none of them, they were all back ordered because of COVID, I guess. And um, so I was starting to panic and think I wasn't gonna be able to get fridge in here. And yeah, I called McLean and he said, yeah, I just build my own. That's right. So there you go. 
Um, this is off currently, or is this hot? It's off. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't even have a fuse in it, and the gotcha. switch is off. All right. Okay. I'm holding the fuse in my hand. All this stuff put together before I shove the whole thing in there. If I wired it right, red is positive, <laughs> and black is negative. Let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, I wired this whole boat myself. It was pretty uh, nice. It was pretty great, actually. I I really uh, I really liked it. In the end, I didn't think I was gonna, but <laughs> it can be fun. I actually liked it so much. I thought, wow, I wouldn't have minded doing this for a living, you know. Oh wow! It was. Uh, I don't know. I think it depends on your personality. I liked it because it was very linear, you know. It, you know when you're making a mistake, pretty much. Yep. Well, you certainly know when you turn it on. That's right. <laughs> The smoke comes out, you know, you know you made a mistake. If the thing works <laughs> and it doesn't start smoking. <laughs> I have a couple of good marine electricians that are friends of mine that come over and check everything and make sure I didn't screw something up. Oh, that's good. That, that always helps. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And those don't need any heat shrink or anything on them, huh? No, they're, they're just fine. Um, and so the, the fan on the blower will cycle with the compressor. So basically it, when the compressor's running, that fan will be running. Oh, okay. And so then that kind of really helps keep the box all, you know. And what are you thinking the draw is on this when it's um, on? So when it's, when it's cycling? Yeah, so you've got actually, so these are variable speed compressors. Um, you know, a lot of manufacturers will just fix them. Basically you, you put a resistor a specific of a specific resistance in line with the thermostat and it'll run anywhere from half speed to full speed. Um, so I basically put it in the thermostat here. Um, we basically have a high speed, low speed switch. Mm -hmm. So low speed um, is basically, like I said, it's about 55, 60% of its normal speed. I mean, that'll draw two and a quarter amps or so. Uh, high speed will draw around four and a half or so. Um, so if I'm in a hot climate, I might have to turn it up to high. Yeah, but yeah. generally speaking, the low speed tends to be the more efficient one. Because um, yeah. actually, if you every time this thing kicks on for probably the first minute, minute and a half, you're not actually getting any cooling done. It's basically just building up the high pressure on one side and sucking down the low pressure on the other. And so you know, basically, you're burning. You know, you multiply that by however many times the thing cycles every day. You know, and you have this. You can have a fair amount of um, of amp hours that aren't really accomplishing any cooling, so it's actually more efficient if you can get it to run for a longer cycle because um, they're basically accomplishing the same thing. It's just you know you're pumping the heat out of there, and if you can do it with less starts and stops, and that's actually more efficient than you know having it kick on for a short period of time and then kick off and then kick ah, back right, on. Ah, right, yeah. Sort of like city driving versus highway driving. Yeah. Um, this stuff is a uh, nylog blue, which is Kind of a newer product, but it's basically a uh, kind of sealant and thread loop or lubricant for uh, refrigeration systems, or it won't contaminate the system. Oh, um, I see. It actually. So it's not like it's it's it does what uh, Loctite will do, but it's a. Yeah, exactly. It's a safe one for. Yeah, and it it just really kind of helps lubricate everything without the fear of getting like a you know chunk of pipe dope or something inside your refrigeration system, which could clog the cap tube up potentially. Hmm. So one of those is an in and one's an out of the Correct. refrigerator? Correct. Yeah. Yep, the, the high pressure discharge goes and then feeds the cap tube. Once it comes out of the other end of the cap tube, it's low pressure getting sucked back on the other one here. So let me wrap my brain around how I'm going to do this here. Let's see. Um, let's see if we can do it inside here. Partially, maybe. Yeah, it opens up a bit when you get it in there. Let's turn it on. There we go. Come on, get off there. There we go. All right. Well, it's gonna be, we're gonna do some boat yoga here. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. So you probably don't work on the little boats as much as the big ones, huh? Um, not this little. This is a nice little guy. <laughs>
has leaks in the system, it'll be through those. It sh yeah, I mean, that's typically, but I mean, these are kind of the newer design of these compared to some of the older couplings. Um, so they really shouldn't leak on you. So what do you think is keeping uh, the, the supply down right now? You know, I'm really... Import issues or... I'm really not sure. I'm just really, you know, surprised how bad it really is. Um, I mean, some companies like Novacool switched to kind of being a build to order um, company a little while ago. And so even last year, it was a four or five month wait for, you know, one of their units, uh, which is kind of hard when you know, people's boats fail on them right before. Is it helping your fridge. business, this whole thing? I mean, obviously um, it did a little bit, you're here. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah, I can't argue with that. Um, I mean, maybe? It's, it's hard to say, you know, and it's, I mean, people are getting. You know, do you sell yours online? Like, I do can not people, know. Oh, that might be an idea, huh? I guess you're too busy anyway. Yeah. You're so I mean, busy. You don't really need to start being kind of a one man show. It's like, I can only kind of spread myself so many different directions. Yeah. Right. Um, one final little turn on that thing. But... Oh, there she goes. Perfect. Okay, that part is done. Alright, look at this guy. He's tucked in here. So what's the one up there that is not hooked up to anything? Uh, what are we talking about? This the little stem sticking out here? Yeah, or? no, right here. Oh, um, that's a, it's a high side service port. Oh, so that's that, a service port. Yeah, and then this one here is the low side service port back here. Oh, okay. Um, so it's what you hook your, your gauge set onto, you know. Oh, okay, um, to, to read it and see what the... To see what the pressure oh, okay. are, correct, yeah. So what happens if it's at an angle like that? Does it I mean, just there, not draw as well, or the the compressor itself has oil on the bottom of it? Um, so I mean, oh I see, yeah. These are designed to be able to go up to I want to say thirty five degrees. Yeah. Um, but as far as permanent installation, you know, I mean, it's you might as well just take the yeah. Plus it'll be blowing, it'll be pulling right through these holes. <coughs> yeah, exactly, and that'll kind of get us right, you know, right up against it. So just... my my custom design bent that are all measured perfectly <laughs> which my wife indicated that that was not the way i was supposed to have done that <laughs> apparently i was supposed to put an x where all those holes should be instead of just taking the hole saw after the thing what fun would that be though right exactly <laughs> you have nothing to talk about after this you know now you can talk about how weird it looks <laughs> i can make something up i might put a couple extra holes right here and here well, there you, you know, go. I mean, extra holes in this wouldn't be a bad thing. You think that's good? Yeah. Well, I mean, it lifts the actual board up itself oh, and yeah, trying to lift yeah. it up, so that's its own thing. Um, all right. So. All right. So that's all good. That's there's all good. nowhere for it to go in there anyway. So. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's oh, that's in real nice and tight. Let's see. And does your does your lid go inside of this? Yeah, it does. A, yeah. Um, let's see how much it drops down. Just to make sure. Stupid. Yeah, and I'm gonna put a. You're gonna add insulation. I'm gonna. It, right? It's yeah. about. Yeah, it's about this thick. It's closed cell foam. It's about that thick. Okay. So in terms that. of thermostat location here, um, actually, um, probably just right over here is probably the best spot. Okay, I don't really want to block the fan. If I get, I guess it doesn't matter too much if I'm down here. How about right there? Yep, that works for you. And that yeah, does that look like that's enough space for the insulation? Oh yeah, I think I think that's fine. Okay. Grab my screws yet. Yeah, it's, this is nothing. <laughs> I wonder if it's easier to do this. Yeah. Might be easier. Okay, maybe I'll even bring it up a little bit. Let's see, we'll go like that. Let's see. 
So is that the fan running right now, the compressor? Yep, everything's running. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's what I'm hearing. That's as loud as it's gonna be. Um, and you know, and you'll hear the refrigerant bubbling in there a little bit as it kind of squirts through. Awesome. But yeah, definitely not, not a loud system by any means. Gonna be the nicest refrigerator on a North C27. That's right. And I mean, there is a possibility that uh, some of the people with this same fridge on these boats, you know, might want to convert their ice box. And they, so if you keep all the dimensions, yeah. they may call you and say, hey, you know, because I'm putting it on all those pages. Well, there you go. So you'd, you'd be able to then make them exactly what I have and just send it to them. That is very true. And then they could watch your installation video. <laughs> they could do it themselves. <laughs> McLean's refrigeration in installation video on a North Sea 27. That's right. With his custom built That's North Sea refrigerator. There you go. All right. Well, Did I tell you last time we were you were here that my family, you know, we lived on our boat. Uh -huh. No refrigeration for like Oh, really? Yeah, like 8 years. Oh, jeez. In the Caribbean. Oh, jeez. In St. Thomas. <laughs> just eating a, just eating a lot of warm tortillas and stuff. Or what? <laughs> just, just no, no cold stuff. I mean, it was wow. just, yeah, everything. Else. We had an ice bucket for for drinks, and that was it. And we'd go get ice, but we didn't actually refrigerate. It. We didn't have anything to refrigerate. Wow. Of course, we had you know five children, so oh jeez. We'd, we'd open those high temp box milks and they'd be gone you know one sitting so we didn't have to refrigerate and there was no leftovers to refrigerate oh yeah oh well, that's true huh just eat it all up and yep throw the rest in the but water. we learned we learned all these things that people refrigerate that they don't have to you know oh okay eggs, eggs you know yeah. lots of stuff that people refrigerate and they don't need to yep But this refrigerator actually, even after we added the one to the bigger boat that we had, uh -huh. it wasn't this nice. It oh. wasn't this big. It was just a small <laughs> little box. Which probably felt like a luxury. And it was. It was yeah. great. And all of a sudden we had, you know, cold beer. Yeah. Well, there you go. So you can live with no fridge as a kid, but you know, you can have a boat with no cold beer. <laughs> so what's the point? <laughs> well, I'm going to turn this off now, McLean. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to film you while you did this, and thanks for being available to come out and uh, build the refrigerator and install it for Meg. You bet, no problem. So yesterday, I finished up this fridge, and here's what we've got. I put new weather stripping on the door, and then I put foam around the inside of the door and this the walls are already insulated but all of this area here was not this stuff that was just the wood there was no insulation here so I put this foam so now when this door shuts there's insulation on the door itself, the foam insulation that it came with, and the, and the weather stripping now. And then um, inside the fridge, boy, it's hard to handle this uh, light as well. So the other thing I did is I put foam on the bottom of this and the weather stripping around it. And then in here, I put foam, let me just take this out. I put foam in here up on top as well all the way back and so now this fridge box is ins insulated really well and I'm very happy with the work that McLean did with this I turned it on yesterday and I got it down to on medium setting there it's set, it's set on medium right now on five goes up to 10 and it got down to 30 degrees so um, that's pretty cool and it got down to 30 degrees in in the front area in the fridge area I mean the whole thing's a fridge area but I think I can work it out so that the fridge area stays refrigerated 
and I might be able to turn it down low enough that the back area becomes a freezer area. We'll see. But uh, that was on low setting too. It wasn't even on the high setting. So of course we're in the Pacific Northwest. Although it was 72 yesterday when I did that. So it's not like it was, it's not like it was cold yesterday here. So today I'm gonna finish up some caulking in here and then I'm gonna go out and work on the sanding on the bow sprit and the refrigerator will be completely finished. Turns and fades to black 